Halima Umar, a female Corps member kidnapped by the Boko Haram terrorists in January 2019 while serving in the Ministry of Finance in Borno State, has been freed. Premium Times reports that the member of the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, was brought to the office of the Deputy Governor of Borno State at about 3.30 p.m. on Thursday by some security. Officers led by the General Officer Commanding 7th Division, Brigadier General Abdul Malik B.I.U., a 23-year-old founder of Kaltam Foundation for Peace, Kaltam Rabiu, was with the security men who brought the victim. Her freedom came as a result of a joint coordinated engagement involving key stakeholders. It is an outcome of a preliminary level negotiation involving the state government, the Kaltham. Foundation for Peace, a non-governmental organization with intermediatory negotiation with the leadership of the terror group handled by a prominent investigative journalist with critical access. The insurgents released Ms. Umar as a sign of goodwill to commit to a new process of resolving the conflicts in the region. The state government, the military, the DSS played vital roles deploying professional field experience and strategic cover for the process. The state government shall continually bring the media up to speed as may be necessary, the state government said in a statement. Brigadier General Abdul Malik Biu told the Deputy Governor Umar Kadhafer that the NYSC member was rescued through various collaborative efforts of the state government, security agencies and other critical stakeholders. We're here, Your Excellency, to hand her over to the Borno state government for onward reuniting her with her family, he said. Related slideshow, news and pictures provided by photo services. A health worker administers polio vaccination on children in Karachi, Pakistan, on June 19, 2019. Pakistan is one of the last two countries, along with Afghanistan, where polio is still endemic. Iraq's President Baram Saleh C. stands with Kuwait's ruling Amir Sheikh Sabah al Ahmad al Sabah L. during a welcoming ceremony in Baghdad, Iraq, on June 19, 2019. Siraj al Haq, chief of the religious party Jamaati Islami Pakistan, leads a funeral prayer for former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi in Peshawar, Pakistan, on June 18, 2019. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, president of Turkey, speaks to media regarding the death of Egypt's first democratically elected president Mohamed Morsi during court session in Istanbul, Turkey, on June 17, 2019. Supporters of Jamaat e Islami take part in a demonstration against the price hike in food and other goods in Lahore, Pakistan, on June 16, 2019. Syria's Foreign Minister Walid al muallam L meets with Chinese Vice President Wang Qishan at the Jiangnan-A Leadership Compound in Beijing, China, on June 17, 2019. Civilians queued receive vaccination against the Ebola virus at Kirimbo Village in Uganda on June 16, 2019. Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Ali observes a guard of honor as he arrives after completing his Europe tour in Kathmandu, Nepal, on June 16, 2019. Ivan Sarkos, R., head of European Union delegation to Egypt, and Sahar Nasser, Egypt's Minister of Investment and International Cooperation, sign an agreement for a European grant to renovate. The Egyptian Museum in Cairo, Egypt, on June 16, 2019. People are seen celebrating Pentecost in Kiev, Ukraine, on June 16, 2019. Buddhist monks attend the annual meeting of the group Ma Bada in Yangon, Myanmar, on June 17, 2019. Masrur Barzani, 4th L, the new Prime Minister of Iraq's Autonomous Kurdistan Regional Government, meets with members of the Kurdistan Democratic Party in Erbil, Iraq, on June 16, 2019. A Mexican soldier keeps watch at the border during an operation to inhibit migrants to cross illegally into the U.S. in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, on June 16, 2019. 
Iran's Minister of Energy Reza Ardakanian R, attends a joint press conference with Russia's Minister of North Caucasus Affairs Sergei Chebataryov in Tehran, Iran, on June 16, 2019. Buddhists pray at Kalania Temple in Sri Lanka on June 16, 2019, during Poya, a full moon festival. Sandra Torres, presidential candidate for the National Unity of Hope UN, talks to the media following the first round of presidential election at the official voting results center in Guatemala City, Guatemala, on June 17, 2019. A man holds the national flag during a rally attended by General Mohamed Hamdan de Gallo, the deputy head of the military council, to support the new military council that assumed power in Sudan. In Khartoum, Sudan, on June 16, 2019, a man stands at the Aristabulo del Valle train station in Buenos Aires, Argentina, on June 16, 2019, during a national blackout. Istanbul's mayoral candidate Ekrem Amalmolu of the Republican People's Party, accompanied by his wife Dilek, waves as he arrives for a televised debate with Benali Yildirim of Justice and Development Party, ahead of the elections, in Istanbul, Turkey, on June 16, 2019. People gather for a protest against migrants in Bihać, Bosnia and Herzegovina, on June 16, 2019. People watch and record fireworks during the IAAF Diamond League meeting in Rabat, Morocco, on June 16, 2019. A rally against racism and support for migrant workers' rights takes place in Toronto, Canada, on June 16, 2019. French President Emmanuel Macron, C. French Defense Minister Florence Parley, L. and Eric Trappier, Chairman and CEO of Dassault Aviation, attend the 53rd International Paris Air Show at La Bourget Airport near Paris, France, on June 17, 2019. Indian students and doctors of Guwahati Medical College Hospital hold posters as they stage a silent protest during the nationwide strike held after the recent assault in Kolkata on an inner doctor in Guwahati, India, on June 17, 2019. Activists of Pakistan People's Party shout slogans as they protest the arrest of Asif Ali Zardari, former president and co-chairperson of Pakistan People's Party, in Karachi, Pakistan, on June 15, 2019. Sri Lankan Buddhist devotees offer a saffron cloth to mark the festival of Pova, a sacred full moon event, in Kalania, Sri Lanka, on June 16, 2019. Zuzana Kaputova reviews the Guard of Honor after she is sworn in as Slovakia's first female president in Bratislava on June 15, 2019. A health worker prepares an Ebola vaccination in the village of Kagando, Uganda, on June 15, 2019. Front LR Bangladesh President Mohammad Abdul Hamid, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, Kyrgyz President Soran Beijing Bekov, Uzbek President Shafkat Mirziyoyev, Chinese President Xi Jinping, Tajik President Emo Mali Rahman, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Kazakh President Kasim Jomar Tokayev, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Qatar's Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid. Al Thani and other leaders pose for a photo during the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia, CISO, in Dushanbe, Tajikistan, on June 15, 2019. Yoga enthusiasts take part in a mass yoga session to mark International Day of Yoga in Nakuru, Kenya, on June 15, 2019. The event, which is annually celebrated on June 21, was firstly proposed by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2014 to the UN General Assembly, which adopted it. Members of We Are The Love group hold placards and white balloons as they gather for a demonstration against Assad regime's airstrikes over Syria's Idlib and different cities in Sarajevo, Bosnia and Herzegovina, on June 15, 2019. People gather to mark International Day of Yoga in Yangon, Myanmar, on June 15, 2019.
Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan speaks at a meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, on June 14, 2019. A picture taken with a drone on June 14, 2019, shows damaged and destroyed buildings in the town of Isim, in the Idlib region of Syria. Rescue workers clear debris in the ruins of a house which came under an artillery attack in the village of Marinka in Ukraine on June 14, 2019. A nine-year-old girl and three of her family members were injured in the attack. Algerian protesters gather during an anti-government demonstration in Algiers, Algeria, on June 14, 2019. Youth activists hold placards as they take part in a rally to stop mass animal sacrifice during the Gautamai Festival in Bara district of Nepal on June 14, 2019. U.S. President Donald Trump speaks about health care coverage options for small businesses and workers during an event at the White House in Washington, D.C., U.S., on June 14, 2019. Pakistani lawyers protest outside the Supreme Court in Islamabad, Pakistan, on June 14, 2019. Supreme Judicial Council began examining a government request for the removal of senior judge Qazifai Azisa for concealing assets abroad. A worker fixes the mast of a U.S. flag along the side of a road in the settlement of Qela Brucham in the Israeli annexed Golan Heights on June 14, 2019. 49 pairs of military boots are put at the St. Michael's Square in Kiev, Ukraine, on June 14, 2019, to symbolize the soldiers who lost their lives when an E-76 military transport aircraft with 40 paratroopers and 9 crew members on board was shot down near Luhansk Airport five years ago. Cyprus President Nikos Anastasiades L. and Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez hold a press conference outside the Auberge de Castile in Valletta, Malta, on June 14, 2019, after the first Southern EU Countries Summit. China's President Xi Jinping attends a session during the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Bishkek on June 14, 2019. People coming from Congo wash their hands with chlorinated water to prevent the spread of Ebola at the Mpondwe border crossing with Congo in western Uganda on June 14, 2019. Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido, who many nations have recognized as the country's interim ruler, greets supporters after delivering a speech in Tovar, Venezuela, on June 14, 2019. Members of indigenous Nuar community take part in a torch rally against the controversial bill that envisions nationalizing all Gutis trusts and regulating all religious sites under a powerful commission in Lalitpur, Nepal, on June 14, 2019. China's President Xi Jinping R. shakes hands with Iran's President Hassan Rouhani on the sideline of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Bishkek on June 14, 2019. Buddhist nuns walk in the Shwedagon Pagoda in Yangon, Myanmar, on June 14, 2019. A street vendor wears a hat to protect himself from heat in Baghdad, Iraq, on June 14, 2019. Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam speaks at a news conference in Hong Kong on June 15, 2019. Kyrgyzstan's President Soren Bajin Bekov L. and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi attend an official welcome ceremony prior to their talks in Bishkek on June 14, 2019. Kyrgyzstan's President Soren Bajin Bekov L. and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi attend an official welcome ceremony prior to their talks in Bishkek on June 14, 2019. Russian President Vladimir Putin meets with his Belarus counterpart Alexander Lukashenko on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Bishkek on June 14, 2019. Protesters march during a demonstration against the government of President Jovenel Moise in the streets of Port-au-Prince, Haiti, on June 14, 2019. People are seen going back to Dhaka after Eid al-Fitr vacation, in Bangladesh on June 14, 2019. 
This photo released by the U.S. Navy shows sailors aboard the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer USS Bainbridge rendering aid to the crew of the Kokuka Courageous, one of two oil tankers suspected to have been attacked in the Gulf of Oman. The U.S. military, on June 14, released a video it said showed Iran's Revolutionary Guard removing an unexploded limpet mine from one of the oil tankers targeted near the Strait of Hormuz, suggesting the Islamic Republic sought to remove evidence of its involvement from the scene. Kadavar commended the military for rescuing the woman while adding that it was an encouragement to the state government in the efforts to see to the rescue of the remaining Chibok girls. Still with the Boko Haram. We know she may have missed most parts of her NYSC program, but the Borno state government would do everything to ensure she gets the best supports she needs to reintegrate in the society, he said. Speaking after her rescue, the Corps member said, I thank God and the military that rescued me. Legit.ng earlier reported that some suspects were arrested by the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corp. NSCDC for allegedly supplying petroleum products to Boko Haram terrorists. The members of the gang were reportedly operating between the borders of Nigeria and the neighboring Cameroon Republic in Adamawa State.